Greetings from the Jazz Cloud, I'm Richie Zellon and in this video I want to share with you a couple of related improvisational resources that can add an entire new dimension to your solos. And I'm going to explain triad pairs in just a moment, but before I do, I'm sure that some of you are wondering what on earth is a hexatonic scale? <laughs> well, it has nothing to do with an Allen wrench. <laughs> I know that being guitar players, you're all familiar with pentatonic scales, which consist of five notes. Well, a hexatonic scale simply consists of six notes. And while we're on the subject, a seven note scale is known as a heptatonic. Sounds like some medicine they give you if you come down with heptatitis. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Okay, so now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about why we would want to use a hexatonic scale in the first place. Isn't having seven note choices in a scale better than just having six? Well, the answer is yes and no. It depends. Most seven note modes derived from the natural major scale include one note that often clashes with the related chord and this is the infamous avoid note. For the most part, it resides a half step above a chord tone, like in the case of the four in a major scale. So if we exclude just that one note from our major heptatonic, we end up with a major hexatonic. So now we don't have to worry about playing a sour note, but that should not be your main reason to play a hexatonic. You should know that the avoid note in any given scale can supply added motion to your lines and actually make them sound good. That is, as long as you resolve them quickly instead of resting on them. So a good musician doesn't think of them as avoid notes. The most powerful reason for turning any seven note scale into a hexatonic is that you'll be able to extract from it two triads. In contrast to playing scales in stepwise motion, these triad pairs will effectively convey the full vertical spectrum of the given scale's harmonic characteristics. And if what I just said has your head spinning like crazy, don't worry. If you want to learn, please stick with me because next I am going to demonstrate this and explain the details. Let me add that this is a two-part series. In this first one, we are going to learn the procedure to come up with triad pairs from any scale. And there are several lessons online that show you licks based on triad pairs, but they don't tell you how to come up with them on your own. So many feel they've reached a dead end, stuck with the licks and can't take the concept to the next level. Having said that, in part two, I am going to teach you six cool 251 ready to play licks or phrases, call them whatever you want, based entirely on this concept. But today, let's explore the procedure so you can start practicing the fundamentals of this concept. And if you can't wait and want to get your hands on the phrases right away, towards the end of this lesson, I tell you how to download a mega package that includes all the materials to study and practice the content from both part one and two of this series. So let's dive in. In the notation above, you can see that I've organized the six notes into two triads by simply alternating the notes in the scale. This is step one. Step two is to identify these triads and to do so we have to first determine if any of them are inverted. In the above example, the first triad consists of C, E, and A. Because it is not built uh, based on successive intervals of a third, we know that it is indeed inverted. Three notes with an interval of a third and a fourth denote a first inversion. The second triad consists of D, G, and B. 
It is also inverted. And three ascending notes with an interval of a fourth and a third denote a second inversion. So in order to uh, reinvert each of these inverted triads back into root position, we want to get them so that there is an interval of a third between each pair of notes. And in the above example, the resulting triads are A minor and G major. So let's take these uh, triads, let's look at them, and we see that this first one is C, E, A. And we have an interval of a third between the C and the uh, E. And then we have an interval of a perfect fourth between the E and the A. So the first thing we do is we want to take uh, the lowest note and bring it up an octave while leaving the other two notes in place. And we get this shape here and we immediately start seeing what it is. You know, if you played guitar long enough, we see the shape of an A minor. Okay, but it's still inverted. And now what we need to do is we need to take the lowest note here, an octave up, and we get this open E string. So, uh, because we don't want any open strings, let's take this up here. We have this triad, A minor, in root position. So the original one, because we have a third in the bottom two notes and a fourth in the second two notes, that denotes a first inversion. For the second triad, we have we have a D, a G, and a B, and, and we see here a perfect fourth between the lower pair of notes, between the D and the G, and then we see a, a major third here in the second pair, and that denotes a second inversion. So again, all we have to do here is bring the lowest note up an octave, to this D up to this one, get it back into root position and we can clearly see that it's a uh, G, G major triad. So now you know whenever you see a chord written and it's not in successive thirds, you'll be able to figure out how to get it back into root position if you don't know what it is. So in conclusion, the triad pair we can use whenever it calls for a natural major scale is a major one built over the five and a minor one built over the six of the scale. So for a C Ionian, this would be a G major because G is the fifth degree of C and A minor because A is its sixth degree. And this is what is known as superimposition. So next we want to practice all triad pairs in root position and first and second inversion. Before we can get creative and improvise with them, we need to get them under our fingers and get used to how they blend with the sound of their related chord. I'm going to play this initially in eighth note triplets and it goes like this. One, two, three, four. Of course, we can play it uh, in uh, eighth notes and a quarter note, such as. Or any combination of rhythms you want. And also, we can work out different permutations in order to practice different variations of the three notes in each triad. For example, I initially just did it in order, that, that is playing the one, the three, and the five of the triad. But we can also go, for example, one, five, three, and go up the sequence in that order, like, uh,
You can also do maybe a three, five, one. Also, uh, five, one, three. How about five, three, one? <laughs> okay, and then we can also alternate them like uh, one, three, five, five, three, one, like. forget that there's other fingerings that we need to work out for these. We could do it up here. So the effect in essence, as you have heard, is like creating a micro chord progression over the uh, parent chord, in this case uh, C major 7. Now that I've shown you the step-by-step -step procedure. I want to quickly demonstrate the process to obtain triad pairs for a 2-5 cadence. Since we already have the uh, hexatonic and triad pairs for the 1 major 7, in order to do the same for the 5-7, we would again omit the 4, the 4th degree that is of the scale, this time in a mixolydian. And we would obtain our dominant hexatonic this way. The resulting triad pair this time consists of two minor triads built over the fifth and sixth of the scale. Let me demonstrate how the resulting triads sound like when alternating between them in their different inversions. One, two, three, four. Finally, let's do the same for the 2 minor 7 chord. And for this, we will omit the 6th degree from a Dorian mode. In the Dorian, we don't have any official avoid notes. The 4 sounds great and doubles as the 11th. So why omit the 6? Well, even though the 6th degree isn't an avoid note, when using the Dorian in a 2-5 context, we want to treat it as such, that is as an avoid note. Otherwise, we will end up mimicking the dominant chord that follows it and the whole point of preceding it with a two minor will be lost. And the reason behind this is because the sixth in the Dorian forms a tritone with its flat three, which is a sound we want to reserve in order to characterize the dominant. The triad pair that we can extract from this Dorian hexatonic is the major one built over its flat 7 and a minor one over its root. So for a C Dorian, our triad pair consists of B flat major and C minor. And let's hear what they sound like when played alternatively in their different inversions. And this one we're going to finger starting up in eighth position. One, Two, three, four. And before I demonstrate the three sets of triad pairs over a major 251 cadence, I want to tell you about the mega study package you can download for parts one and two of this lesson. And it includes a set of PDFs with the step-by-step -step procedure I've demonstrated here. And for those that have the software, a band in a box file with the three sets of tried pairs played in all their inversions over a 251. And with band in a box, you'll be able to play them in any key at any tempo with a virtual rhythm section behind you. In addition, for part two, it includes a set of PDFs with not only the six phrases I will be teaching you in the next lesson, but 10 additional ones 
That is a total of 16 triad pair based phrases over two five ones. Regular notation and tab is included for each one. You also get an MP3 of each phrase as well as a band in a box file containing all of them. So if you're serious about incorporating this concept into your playing, this special download will be of great help. And it's available from my website, jazzguitar.richiezellen.com forward slash premium. And you'll find the link under many courses. So next I'm going to improvise over a uh, major 2-5-1 cadence. And I'm going to start out just using some regular lines before I get into the uh, uh, triad pairs so you can hear the contrast. And when I play the uh, triad pairs, I'm going to play them strictly in uh, eighth note triplets so you can single out each triad and hear it clear. Uh, however, in the uh, upcoming lesson in part two of this series, the licks I'm going to show you are going to use a lot of different rhythms. I'm going to break away from using these uh, constant eighth note triplets because it's ends up sounding like an exercise if you do that for too long. So we're going to get into some really interesting stuff. Here goes. the lookout for part two of this series in which I will teach you six cool triad paired based 251 licks. As usual, I appreciate your comments and welcome your questions. And if this is your first time on the Jazz Guitar Channel and you enjoyed this lesson, please be sure to subscribe and don't forget to click on the bell icon so you will be notified of my upcoming lessons. Until then, Stay safe and peace be with you.